Hey everyone, how is everyone doing? Thanks so much for joining today. Um, we're going to be doing another Gravity Sketch live demo today. And so um, we're just gonna jump right into it. Uh, my name is Jaron Dorman. I'm the Gravity Sketch Design Community Manager. And uh, I get to connect with all of you out there and show you great new things in Gravity Sketch uh, with the iPad app more recently, um, as well as VR. And it's just been a pleasure uh, speaking with all of you and, and answering your questions. So thank you very much for joining today. What we're going to be doing today is doing a live demo in Gravity Sketch uh, of uh, a supercar. Um, and this was completely uh, inspired just, just today. So we're going to see how it goes. Um, but the goal is just really to show you all how to use the Gravity Sketch iPad app um, and answer any of the questions that you might be having. Um, feel free to post your questions right in the chat uh, on here on YouTube, and I'll be um, monitoring those as they come through and try and answer your questions um, to the best of my ability. So uh, without further ado, why don't we just get right into it? So today, um, I'm gonna try and go for a, a supercar style, um, styled vehicle. And it's going to be uh, pretty simple. We might get to some surfaces, potentially. Um, I just want to preface by saying surfaces are not yet supported on Gravity Sketch iPad um, as far as, you know, like sub D or anything. But uh, we do have a type of surface called a ribbon tool, which is basically a surface. And so you can kind of stretch it around things and, and stuff like that. You might have seen it um, in some of the helmet tutorial videos that we've, we've put out. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So um, I'm going to start a new sketch here. Uh, let me go back actually real quick, um, just in case you're seeing this for the first time. This is the new Gravity Sketch iPad app. And so when you scroll uh, up and down, uh, when you log in through your landing pad, you will see this uh, Maya Files grid. And these are basically all your sketches that are on landing pad. So uh, yes, you do need landing pad. Uh, in order to start using the app. Well, actually, uh, that's incorrect. You, um, you might be able to start using some basic things, but you need to definitely sign in. Uh, it's better just to go ahead and go get landing pad, sign in, um, and then any files you have in your landing pad, they'll be right here. If you go over to gallery, these are preloaded sketches that, are, uh, that come with the app. And so there's some example works in here. These have all been made in Gravity Sketch iPad. Um, and then here's just some helpful information for you with some links. So um, let's just get right back here. Um, but the way we start a new sketch is uh, we can press on the plus uh, box there, and that starts a new sketch, just like in VR. And we have a blank screen here. And what you'll notice is if you start maybe touching with your finger, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a crosshair there appearing, and the whole space kind of highlights gray. And what's happening is, is the gray is the sketch plane. So um, you'll notice the bottom right down here, uh, the, uh, the gimbal, or sorry, not the gimbal, the, um, the view cube is moving. That means you're actually moving through the scene. Um, if we want to snap to a view, we are just going to tap one of the faces, and we can snap to that view. Right now, it's kind of hard to see what's happening because um, we don't really have a grid turned on, and we don't really have anything sketched in the scene. So let's go to our settings. And we can turn on, let's see here. Maybe I actually need to um, draw something first. So if I'll go ahead and just sketch, and there we go. And then... Uh, I wonder if the grid has been removed, or maybe I'm missing where it is. Um, so we're also making making changes to this app, uh, by the way. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. So the grid is there. <laughs> I was just in the wrong mode. So I was actually just going to get to that, um, which is essentially there's two modes when sketching in the iPad app. And so uh, there's the free free move mode 
where your camera or the view that you're seeing in the scene is, is free of the sketch plane. So now we can see the grid. Um, and that is because our camera or our, our eye in Gravity Sketch is free, uh, independent of the actual scene. Um, if we click this uh, S-shaped icon here, I'll, take, I'll use the uh, Apple Pencil. Uh, this S-shaped uh, icon here, if we tap that again, Right now, we're still navigating our, around our scene, but now the draw plane is locked to our camera. So any view that we're viewing, I can sketch in this view. And then when I move, you can see it's, it's planar. I can sketch here. So I just, just then and there, I sketched on a completely new plane. So I can do a triangle over here, circle over here. So it's a way to quickly sketch in 3D as you move around. Um, but if you want to be a little more precise, you'd probably be in this mode here and, and move your sketch plane. Now you might ask, how do you move the sketch plane off the center and, uh, and, and sort of move this, the sketch plane the way you want it? Well, we have this slider here on the left side that will allow you to um, translate the sketch plane along that, the axes that it was last on. So. Um, we can do it that way. If we want to snap it to a specific view, just like I mentioned before, click on one of the views in the cube. And then over here at the right, you'll see this icon here. This basically says, I want to snap my sketch plane to what I'm looking at. So I'm going to click that button, and then the sketch plane snaps to that view. And so now I can start sketching um, on that view, and it will be on that plane. Now you can see it's a little bit off-center. That's because we were using the, um, let's see here. And yeah, if I go to, and, and you'll notice too, if I go to any, any view, it doesn't even have to be a snapped view. If I go to this view, I can snap it to that view. If I go to this view, I can snap it to that view. So you can see that example of how you can snap it around. Um, but for some reason, the slider is not working here. I'm not, not sure why. Again, this, this is a work in progress to the app. So, so what we'd love is, is for you to go download the app, give us your feedback, and try it out. People have been doing some really cool stuff with the app so far. So um, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, there we go. We have it moved. It's working again there. Oh, my, my right hand is working, but my left hand is not. That's strange. Um, OK, now it's, now it's all working again. It might have just been in my hand. I don't think it was the app. I, don't, I might not have been touching quite right there. But um, yeah, essentially that's how you move the uh, plane along the axis there. But I'm going to get rid of these uh, lines that I just sketched. So you can do that pretty easily by tapping with two fingers. And that be, might be pretty familiar to uh, some of you out there that have already been using iPad for Procreate or some other apps out there. The multi-touch undo and redo is, is pretty has become pretty standard. If you do a three finger touch, so if I just go ahead and do three fingers, it will redo those sketches that I put down there. Um, but let's go ahead and lay down some wheels uh, for this, this car and let's, let's go ahead and get sketching. So we're gonna go to our side view and something really important um, to realize, if you're gonna do a car or something symmetrical and it, and it, and it matters which axis the um, you know the wheels will be uh, mirrored on. This is our this is our. I'm just drawing from this view here. This is where the mirror plane is uh, is located, and you cannot move the mirror plane. So that's where it's going to be. So we want to make sure that we're drawing our wheels, you know, like this. We want we want to make sure we're going to draw our wheel here, um, so that when we mirror it, we'll see our duplicate over here. Um, if you're in, you know, if you're in the side view and you're, and you're drawing your wheel like this, thinking it's gonna go on this side, um, but it ends up, you know, mirroring over here. Um, sorry, I'm just drawing quick examples, but the mirror plane's actually here. You're going to see actually a, uh, you know, I don't know why I'm drawing it like that, or, um, just pretending like the plane is here. 
basically <laughs> confusing myself. So if I draw if I draw like a, a wheel here and thinking it's gonna mirror like this, well, the mirror plane is actually here, so it, it will just mirror on that side, if that makes any sense. So just make sure you're doing that by this arrow right here. So the top arrow on the cube, that is indicating where the front of the scene is, um, and the mirror runs along that axis. So let's go ahead and get rid of these. I'm gonna go to our side view, because that's what we wanna draw. And we're going to snap our draw plane. One more thing I wanna mention. So you can see um, the draw plane is a little off center, right? It's not quite center in the scene. It's even more not, it's even more off center. If we wanna get it back to the origin of the scene, all we gotta do is click this drop down at the top and click that home button. And that will reset our view as well as the draw plane in the scene. And that's a great way to get your draw plane snapped back to the center. So we're just gonna get our draw plane here. And I'm just gonna quickly sketch some wheels. I'm not gonna be too precious with it. I'm gonna do... And there's a standard uh, in automotive design, um, and it's a, there's a range. Uh, and so when you're sketching vehicles, uh, a good way to figure out wheel spacing is by drawing um, tire widths in between. So it changes uh, depending on what type of vehicle you're doing. Uh, in this case, it's a supercar, and I actually can't quite remember how many wheel lengths it would be for a supercar, but I believe um, they're, they're slightly longer. Um, than the average. So, and, and we're also going with a stylistic sort of interpretation here as well. Um, and so we're just really kind of going with what, what looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with um, three and a half wheel lengths. We'll run with that. Um, it's a really good technique for just figuring out how far you want your wheels to go. Um, and then we're being super, super, super loose here. And what we can start doing is start sketching out our, uh, our vehicle. Now, please excuse some of my drawing here. Um, it's been a little bit of a minute. And typically with supercars, they have a really, um, uh, like a, a long back or, or a long uh, rear because the engine is actually in the rear of the vehicle. And so we're gonna give sort of a, I kind of like, I, I was inspired, and you might notice actually in the thumbnail on the, the image, I was inspired by uh, this, this concept car by Koenigsegg, um, and it just, it just looks really cool. And it's, it's very geometric and, um, and I kind of want to try and emulate that a little bit. Let's see if we can try and achieve that today. <laughs> and why don't I just try and pull up a little picture too, just so I'm referencing that. But if any of you are wondering what I'm talking about, it's the Koenigsegg uh, hypercar concept. Um, pretty cool. And so we're going just for like a really simplified look. And and so I have we have this canopy that kind of sticks up at the top here. And um, I'm trying to figure out what I want kind of the cut to do on the side of the vehicle. So let me minimize this video or minimize this window here. And let's see. Let's see. I think a deep cut in the side would be really cool. Um, let's also get our 
bottom line here. And we can make this really straight. So we are being pretty loose right now. Um, but if we want the bottom to be super straight, because we know that's, that's what we want, and that is going to help us kind of ground the design, um, we can select that line real quick. So in order to go into edit mode on, on the iPad, you click the arrow button here at the top left, and then you select the stroke that you want to edit. When you tap it, it's going to highlight purple. And then at the bottom, you'll see these icons appear. We're going to click the dotted icon, and that is going to allow us to manipulate the points that we've sketched. Um, if you want to delete a point, you simply select it and click the trash can. Um, you can also quickly reduce the amount of points if you have like a bunch of points kind of like, like you can't, I don't know if you can see that closely, but there's a bunch of little points collected here at the end because I did a little, it was a little bit of a curly cue and it was a quick sketch. Um, so a really quick way to just get rid of a lot of the points on this line is to click this minus button and that will reduce the line down quite a bit. You can just go ahead and delete that one, and we'll just go ahead and um, keep it at a uh, like a three point. And this is a supercar, so um, it's gonna be pretty low to the ground. I mean, very, very, very low to the ground. Probably like down here. And that's where we'll have it. And when we're done, we just click the edit mode button again there, uh, and then we have it. And so we can have a little lip that comes out here maybe. Um, don't really know what this is going to be doing in 3D quite yet. <laughs> um, we're just trying to figure things out. And just for the sake of a little bit of visual um, cleanliness, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. So I'm just selecting these entire wheels don't really need them anymore. We just needed them in the beginning to sort of get an idea on our spacing. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember how to move. Um, an object with my finger. There's a way to, um, people were asking how to rotate things, and um, you actually can rotate things uh, in, the, in the iPad app. And basically the way you do that is you, uh, you move it with your finger somehow. I'm trying to remember how to do it. Um, and you're able to rotate using multi-touch. Yeah, like that. Um, oh, wait. Maybe not like that. <laughs> hmm, that's a little weird. Okay. We'll just get it back to back to there for now. Not fiddle too much with that. Actually, just let me go ahead and um, delete that. Draw another one. Oops. Side view. Loving it. Okay, we'll stick with that. Now let's figure out what we're gonna do for the side view here. And I'm looking at some pictures, I'm not trying to do anything too wild, just something pretty pretty simple and basic. Something that we can follow. And I'm, I'm actually referencing pretty heavily from this Koenig's egg, so um, it might even be a little bit of a copy of that which is okay, you know, today we're just doing a nice quick, quick demo. Um, and you can take these principles and apply it to your own designs. Let's see here. I really like what the side of the vehicle is doing where it kind of uh, cuts, cuts here. And there's this, I don't know if you would call this a character line, I guess, I guess you maybe would, um, but uh, this carries all the way back to the back. Um, 
And there's a little bit of an upturn here I see with the the car. I kind of want to flatten a little bit more instead of like upturn. So I want it to kind of flatten out. And I think what we'll do is we'll have this come in. We'll have another piece here. And so that's like another sort of a separate piece. It's hard to see from the side view right here, but that sort of goes in. And then we're going to have all kinds of other interesting stuff in the front that we can't really see right now. Um, and this is all side view. And you might see some of those lines look a little bit darker it's just because they're thicker and they're protruding from the, the plane a little bit more. So that's why you can see them. Um, but essentially, say this is the sketch that you like. And um, I mean, I could, f I could fiddle with this so much more. Um, but for the sake of this video, I really want to keep it, keep it pretty... Uh, pretty brief for, all you, for you all. I mean, as you all know out there, designers and artists, you could spend forever on something. So well, we're just going to keep rolling with what we've got here. So this is obviously a rough sketch. Uh, what we can do next is we can go up here to the top um, to this sort of layered rectangle or la layered uh, square icon, and this is your layers. So if you click on that, um, we can turn off or on our layers. We can lock it. Um, we can also add layers. So we're going to add another layer. And we're just going to hide this one underneath. And so what we've done is that quick little sketch is now our underlay. So we can start um, laying down our, our more defined lines. Uh, and, with, and we're not working from scratch. You know? So we're working you know, um, on top of a, of a hand sketch that we've already done. Um, what we're going to do is I am going to move the plane slightly over just a little bit. So it's a little bit off center to the right. Just so when later when we go to mirror, it's going to be easier to kind of grab them and, um, and separate them when we mirror it. So uh, first thing I want to do is draw our wheels. I want to get those, I want to get those down first. So a way we can do that is go here to our tools. And all the way to the bottom, you'll see Revolve. When you hit Revolve, you can immediately start creating revolved shapes. I'm going to change the material here. Let's see, maybe Reflective or maybe Tune. Yeah, that makes things pretty, pretty easy to see. Um, and I'm going to change the... Actually, I'm going to keep it black for now. So. We're going to draw our wheel. I'm trying to remember how we can get, how we can move the revolve. I believe we just, um, I believe actually the way to do it is to draw your, your circle. And then we take that shape 
and shrink it down. Just delete that. We really don't need all these points. Okay. And then if we want to go ahead and duplicate that, we're going to select it. And then to duplicate, you'll see this layered square uh, on the right side. We're going to click that. And then holding our finger on this square icon down here, we can move, oopsies. We can move our duplicate in a straight line. Now let me explain. So I'm going to delete that. Um, and I forgot to mention, uh, I would go ahead and lock. So if you're doing an underlay technique like this, I would lock that layer so that we don't accidentally touch these other strokes here that are sitting there underneath. Um, but essentially what I did with there was I, um, I'm going to create another duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and select this again, hit duplicate, and I've made a, a duplicate there. Um, if I want to move this straight to the back like I just did, you want to hold the, this modifier key, which is, a, which is uh, indicated by a square. Hold it with your finger, and now you're able to move that object and snap it. That also works in 3D. So if I'm in, a, you know, if I'm in this like, three-quarter view or you know, you know, three, th 3D view, um, I can still move it along plane. I can also move it. It looks diagonal, but I'm actually moving it in 3D space moving it outward. So it also works the other direction as well. It's really, really useful for moving things in, uh, in specific ways and um, on specific axes, essentially. So um, let's get the rest of our sketch lines down here. I'm just going to go ahead and create just another layer. And this is going to be like the main, I think, character line of the, of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and draw this. Oops. Get out of edit mode here, and we're just going to go, oops, still using the revolve tool, and go back to stroke, and I think, uh, oh, well, let me, let me fix this first, so I'm going to go into edit mode, hit the stroke, go into edit mode, collect these, select these collection of points, delete that. Just get rid of getting rid of the points that we don't need. I'm just going to do like a maybe a minus here. So there we are. If you drag out an empty space left to right, that's a way you can box select points and move them around. And if you do a, a firm press, that will add another point. So just a little tip there. So I'm going to add another point. Okay. All right, so now we've got our line. Now say this line is just too thick. Um, we want it to be a little bit thinner because we want to emphasize uh, some other areas first. We might adjust it later, but just say we don't really like this, thic this thickness. Um, we're gonna go all the way to the right and there's a left pointing arrow. That's gonna open up your stroke menu. And this is where you'll be able to edit the thickness of the stroke. You can also edit the thickness of a point on the stroke. So if you select like this end point here and we shrink it down, it kind of turns it into sort of what an ink stroke would make it look like by tapering it just a little bit.
So that's looking good. Um, what we want to do here is uh, go ahead and mirror. I'm going to select this stroke here. And we're going to turn on mirror. Now, there's multiple ways you can do the mirror. You can either sketch and profile like I'm doing and then turn the mirror on later. Or you can go here to the top right to the tools icon. And, uh, or not the tools icons, I'm sorry. But, but basically, like this is the, the uh, it's like a symmetry and axis sort of related tool. Um, I'm going to turn the mirror on here. And now anything I draw from here on out is going to be mirrored. So I'll go ahead and select these because these are currently not mirrored. Mirror, mirror. Okay, looking good. Let's just keep going and uh, get our, I'm gonna make this a little smaller too. You know, I kind of want to do, I feel like these are still too bold. Let me quickly change my color here to like a red color. And I'm going to instead use the ink tool. And I just want to select that. Edit mode, reduce points. Another point. Oopsies, something just weird going on there. Let's see. I have no idea what's going on there. Go ahead and just. Get rid of that. So that's one thing that unfortunately that happens, I think, with the uh, ink tool is if you snap points to add, to add them, they populate in empty space. Um, sometimes, like, it doesn't snap to the sketch plane. Um, but I believe that's something that the team is working on. We're just go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and, and work with what we got there and instead of waste time with sketching that plane or sketching that side profile again and we're just going to focus on the canopy here and I'm going to make sure I have my ink tool oops and then we're going to go ahead and go into edit mode reduce our points because we really don't need that many Add another point. And feel free to ask any questions if you got any, if you've got any um, in your mind. Just sort of massaging some of our points here. I'm going to go back to this side one here and finish up the profile. Go back to our points. Add our points. Go. 
those on there. Actually, second thought, I think I'm just going to get rid of those. And have the, have this wrap around the wheel well. Just like that. All right, try not to be too precious with it because <laughs> it can take, take some time there. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling this out in 3D. So, let's see. Right. We're just going to pull these wheel wells out. And like I mentioned before, I'm just gonna hold this square. We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna duplicate, hold the square again, bring it inward. And there we go. And then if you hold the square, it's also a way to multi-select as well. So we can just go ahead and grab it, pull it out. Make sure we have it coming out there. be a little wide so we're going to select everything and just kind of bring it back in a little bit there we go we're going to select these points go into edit mode and now we can start bringing them inward. And so referencing this Koenig's egg, um, there's not really a harsh transition from the canopy to the main body. And so it almost kind of feels a little arbitrary. Um, the, this line here, this, this honestly should stay, I think a center line. So if I go ahead and select it, I think I should actually just move this back to the center like that and use it as a reference for, uh, for the canopy, which transitions smoothly actually into the rest of the body. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And one line that we can draw is the way the canopy sort of wraps, wraps around. Um, and so, to do that, we're gonna to go to our top view and we can see where it starts and ends. We're going to snap our draw plane to that view and we can begin drawing our outline there. Let's see, I'm gonna go back to that color and then
see here. I feel like, I think I'm stuck in the stroke tool because I'm not seeing the ink tool taper like it should. So let's go to our lobby real quick and go back in our sketch. Maybe that'll fix it. Yeah, there we go. For some reason, the whole time it was in uh, stroke, maybe that's a note for the team, um, it was sort of stuck in, in stroke mode there because I wasn't seeing any taper like what I wanted with my strokes. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm just going to draw this line just quickly. And then um, I'm going to try and draw something. Let's see. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to reduce the amount of points there. Connect those ones in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And then, and so I'm, I'm imagining it's going to be kind of tapering towards the back. And I think this is going to be a fall off as it goes towards the back. Um, let's see, I'm going to bring this out closer to the edge. And so it's kind of a little wobbly there, which is a little bit annoying. Again, another example of just how it's not really supposed to do that. And then we're just going to select that whole line, bring it up. And so that's sort of defining where the canopy sort of rests on the body there. Um, next, let's sort of bring these lines in uh, over the wheel, uh, sort of the order, of the order over the wheel arches here. So we're going to select that stroke, go into edit mode. And I'm, I'm going to go to the top view here and bring this in. Oops. Bring that one in. Looks pretty cool from the top view. I'm just going to make sure this is doing what we want here as well. Looking cool. Now what we can do here real quick, um, we, can, we can continue working uh, on any part of this. Uh, what we can start doing now really is um, defining some of the other shapes here. So we can uh, move our sketch plane. Um, and I'm going to use the slider here. I'm going to move it down to the bottom, right below, let's see, right below this line here, right there. And I'm just going to quickly draw. that shape. And then I'm going to go up again. Oops. Move this sketch plane up once more, right about there. And I'm going to draw another, let's see, another character line right around here. One second. Let me undo that. Ooh. Okay, not really sure why that happened. 
all those lines got super thick. Or there's duplicates. It looks like there's duplicates in there. That's not good. Let's see if we can... Okay. That's something weird. Um, so that's probably a note for the team as well. Right of these strokes got randomly super thick for some reason. Um, and yeah, so as I mentioned before, this, this app is a work in progress, and we're trying to detect these little glitches here and there um, to make it as um, good as possible. So let me figure out what I want to do. Honestly, I think I want to go back and, and draw that as a stroke like I was doing before, because I think it seems to be an issue with, uh, or draw it as an ink tool, because um, I think the stroke is doing some weird stuff. And then we also got some weird duplicates for some reason, not sure why. where it's displaying, actually that's not duplicates, it's just displaying strangely. Um, go to material here. Hmm. It's very interesting, not sure what's going on there, but we'll keep chugging along. Let's go ahead and redraw that real quick, the, what we did there with the, with the stroke tool. So we'll have to go into uh, Let's just turn our mirror off just to kind of simplify things. And we're going to snap to the draw plane there. And I'm going to move the draw plane just want to move it. Let's see here. Way out here so I can see it in front of the sketch. Choose a different color, like something really bright, noticeable, like yellow. And I'm just going to redraw that. Go into edit mode, select that. And I'm going to reduce the points. those there. Take this point, use that. And then we had four, we had three points in each of these corners here. Cool. All right. Now let's get that laid out or um, following our other sketch. It's interesting how it's kind of following the, the original, the, the edited one. So we're going to select that. Just move it on over. Where we want it. Very good. And let's go ahead and get rid of that one. We're going to select this one. And we're going to mirror it.
And I want to change it back to black again so it kind of matches everything else. And, and, and if you're wondering how I did that, the way you do that essentially is um, you, you select the stroke or the object and then you go right over here to this little drop and you can change the color there, the material, things like that. You also have swatches you can choose from. So we're just gonna make it black. And then we're going to go into edit mode there again and get these points right where we want them. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna look to the front and we're going to move the draw plane to this view. And then I'm gonna shift it all the way to the front of the vehicle. So we're just gonna push it all the way to the front right here until it's intersecting where we want. I'm gonna turn my mirror back on. I think that's turned off right now. And I'm just going to draw a quick line there. Edit mode, reduce the points, and refine. Gonna go to the top view, straighten that out because it's not straight at the moment. Select that. There we go. And then I'm going to draw another line. Select that again. Go into edit mode here. Delete that one. Delete that. So that's kind of doing something cool tear, uh, cool at the front view. Now we want to move it, um, I think, slightly out because I was trying to dimensional, do like a little bit of a dimensionality there. So I'm going to select this, move it forward just a little bit, go to the top view, go back into edit mode, select these points. Now I've got a little something going on in the front. We haven't fully uh, defined it, but that's okay. We've got something to work with. And uh, we still need to bring the other wheels out, so we're gonna grab those two. Square, bring those over. Very good. Maybe you bring them out a little bit more because the rear is always a little wider than the front. And then we're going to duplicate those. Oops. Bring those in. There we 
we are. And uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that canopy one as well, because that's just really weird. I have no idea why it's so it got so thick like that. I know there were some uh, changes recently to the scaling function in the iPad app um, and making it um, making it scale correctly in both VR and iPad when you translate uh, between the two. And so it, uh, I wonder if that's maybe something happening here. I really don't know. Um, but we'll be sharing this with the team, and they'll, they'll go ahead and fix it. Um, and that's another reason why we actually do these lives is to basically run through issues and see if we discover issues as well um, and, and work on them together. Um, and we want to be super transparent with you, the community out there, um, on this type of stuff and, and make it better. So let's go ahead and get out of edit mode, snap the draw plane again. And I want to draw, I'm going to turn it yellow again just so I can see it really easily. Just a little profile there. Just select it, reduce it. And there we go. We're going to bring it back to the center. So we're going to delete this one because we don't need that anymore. Bring it right back to the center. And then we're going to change it back to black. Go back to edit mode again. Make sure we've got that. Got that center. Okay, cool. Now I've got our stroke in the center of the scene there, and this is looking like more what I was trying to go for there in the, in the beginning. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and uh, finish up the rest of our lines here. Um, I'm going to go to the side view, and I'm going to sketch out, let's see. Yeah, I guess it'll be I guess it'll be this one. And um we'll just take that go into edit mode there. Just delete the ones we don't need. Individual points. Don't need those. Delete that. And then we're going to um, Move that inward just a little bit. So we're going to select that point. Fold the square. Move that in. And just evaluating here. I'm going to draw another line. That's going to be our our bottom line. <laughs> no pun intended. Select that. Reduce the points.
position it where we need it to be, which is a little bit closer to the vehicle. So we're going to go into edit mode, select that, just push it back in there. I'm going to move the sketch plane to the back. Oops, I'm actually moving it to the side right now, I think. So I'm going to go to the back view, switch the plane to that view, and then I'm going to move it um, back here. There we are. And I'm going to just shift that down a little bit. There we go. And why don't we get our canopy going here? So let's go back to the side view here, like our, our windows, I meant. Um, we can quickly draw those, so let's draw that out. And we can go ahead and adjust that. So we're going to select that line, reduce it, because we definitely don't need all that detail. Some more points on that. And then what we can do is go to our other view here. Ooh, those points really got misconstrued, didn't they? So, wow. Not really sure how to deal with that. Okay, so let's just see if we can recover this. sort of individually move these back. Okay, that was pretty wild. So we're gonna go to the top view, move that to the center. I'm just trying to shape it so that it conforms the way we want it to. Got our center there. I'm also going to check your comments and questions here in a moment. Oh boy, that's not at all what we want. So that's definitely going to be something we'll need to fix um, as far as these points appearing in other parts of the sketch. Definitely a no-no. It's a uh, Slows things down for sure.
Okay. We go to the top view here. And we're just going to see which ones are at the top. I'm going to select these and sort of shift those. Going to go back through the beginning there and then, yeah. Something like that, maybe I. So it's kind of interesting. And because we moved those farther away from each other in that view, we kind of need to sharpen it back up again here. And fix that. Delete that because we don't need that. Okay. <laughs> Lots of complex curves going on here. Let's see if we can finish this up. Um, let's sort of get our uh, character line going, doing something here. So I'm going to draw, let me go in the side view, and then sketch that. Go into edit mode. Reduce. And then add another view. Take our line. Maybe we'll put it this way. Move that one inward. And then what I'm going to try and do is do something weird. So one thing you can do if you have a, if you have a strange angle that you're trying to sketch on, um, you can try and align your camera to that angle. So what I want to do is I want to fill in like I want to do a profile sketch in uh, in this little opening here um, at sort of a non-traditional angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm trying to align my camera view to that to that angle, and then um, look at it. What I can then do is try and intersect the the plane with that at that spot that I'm trying to draw on. See if I can do that. It's kind of hard to see it, so I'm going to see if I can. 
think I get it to right about there, maybe. That spot. I think so. Right about there. And then if I draw, I should be able to. fill that in where it needs to be. So it kind of worked. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and select. Do a little multi-select here. And then just kind of move it where I want it to be. Sketch plane again. I'm going to click the canopy because I really want that to stand out. And I think what I'm going to do now is just sort of focus on sketching little details. So um, something fun that we can do is start sketching out little fun details like this. And, and moving them so we can take this one I guess the, the mirrored one is on that side. I'm not sure why that got moved. Let me go ahead and... So my camera's light's going down. Okay, let's leave it there for a minute. Let me look at through some of your comments here. Wayne says, did you start with reference picks and trace some lines or wing it? Uh, it's definitely winging it. Uh, it. It is inspired heavily from the Koenigsegg, uh, their three-seater concept. Um, and uh, it's, it's heavily inspired by that, just as a reference. And I've just been looking at an image here on the side of my screen. Um, it's not yet possible to bring reference images into the iPad yet, app yet, uh, but that will be an addition that's made at a later point. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit of finicky things, and we just need to fix the, the whole thing where, you know, when you add points, um, you know, it doesn't just populate the point randomly out in space. Um, and you know, so we can get that working a little bit more properly. Um, let's go ahead and sketch some more stuff. Um, I'm gonna realign there, and then I'm just gonna move the sketch plane to about here. And I'm just gonna do like a
line like that. Um, actually, I didn't need to do. Oops, move the sketch plane there. You can just click that, move it up. Not sure what I was really trying to do there. It's I need to ang I want to angle that. Um, I need to figure out how to angle the lines the way I want them to go. Um, let's attempt a ribbon surface because I want to sort of uh, block off some of the sketch so that so that it's easier to perceive. So. We're going to go ahead and go side view here and snap our plane to that view. And I'm just going to draw draw out a ribbon there. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. We just can start going right into edit mode. And I might want to change change it to something brighter so we can easily see, you know, what's going on. But essentially, So it's just a matter of doing a little massaging. Um, Probably, I would probably continue the surface out that way. If I'm totally honest. And I'll probably draw another one. Go into edit mode, reduce it. And just kind of close it like that. way to the end. So you kind of see we can we can sort of use it as a surface basically. So we're gonna multi -se multi select here. And then from here it's just kind of getting the points in position the way you want them. Um, let's see. Man, my screen, screen's getting really dark too. I feel like it's in like a power save mode for some reason. So, apologies for that. Um, but I think you're still able to see what's going on mostly. So we're just going to take these points and we're just going to 
match them to oopsies. Actually, this might be better to do in the 3D view. So remember how I mentioned earlier, you can actually grab points. In the 3D view, as long as you're holding your finger on this square, you're able to move them a little bit more precisely. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. There we go. I want to move it's all at an angle for some weird reason. So I'm just going to select those, get those out here where they should be. That kind of angles outward a little bit. We can also get it out of a sort of a orthographic view and get it more of an isometric view as well. Um, or sorry, uh, yeah, I guess it would be isometric um, and get it to a little bit more of a realistic kind of camera angle. So that's how I would demonstrate that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete delete this, and I'm going to draw a, a, a cast shadow, and then we're going to call it call it done, because I, th I think there's a lot more time that could be spent on this. Um, but I really wanted to show just more examples of, of making those strokes surfaces, or, or I guess pseudo surfaces with the rib ribbon tool. Um, but let's create a little, little cast shadow to kind of complete this. Um, move the plane there. Actually, let's go ahead and center it, like uh, like the tip I mentioned before. Center it on the bottom, and then we can go ahead and start making a making a cast shadow. So why don't we go ahead and draw. Oh, we don't want um, mirror turned on. We want to use black. And we want to make sure we're using stroke tool. There we go. And uh, it's going to be something like, something like that. Go ahead and turn off grid and center lines and just look at the sketch. 
So this is where we got to. Um, I hope you all learned something. Uh, a lot more time could be spent on this and, and getting some of the surfaces and defining a lot more of these details. Um, I kind of like where, where, it's, where it's heading if I were to continue working on it. Um, but I hope you all learned just a little bit better on how to lay down uh, lay down strokes and how to, how to manipulate things. There's obviously some things that we will be improving in the app as well um, and making them better, easier to access, all that stuff. Um, what's really helpful for us is if you just go download it, um, make your own work, uh, tag hashtag gravity sketch iPad on Instagram and post your work. Uh, we love to see what's there. Um, and uh, and we, we just want to uh, we just want to get as much of your feedback as possible because um, that's what's going to be fueling an update later this year. So um, it says Wayne. Um, I'm seeing Wayne. If you, you says you if you could bring in a refs, I was going to be my next question. I was just looking at my iPad version. I couldn't find anything. That's correct. So you can't bring in any reference images at the moment. Um, we do have some reference images or something like that in the gallery uh, for a challenge that we had a few weeks ago. Um, as, a, as a way to, to work with reference images, but you can't actually bring them in yourself unless you also have Gravity Sketch VR, save that sketch in landing pad. Then, of course, you would have access to that on iPad. It's a little bit of a workaround. If you only have iPad, there's not really a way to do it. Can you draw more lines that wrap around the car to demonstrate the complexity of the draw plane? Uh, yeah, and so I was trying to show that a little bit here with this shape. Um, basically how you can essentially, that's kind of weird, the clipping is kind of strange. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. That was kind of weird. Um, but essentially, yeah, the draw plane, uh, you know, you can draw on at, at any sort of angle um, and then reposition the sketch afterwards. Um, Awesome. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I want to also say that we have a uh, challenge going on right now so um, where you can win a brand new Quest 2 VR headset. Um, if you'd like to win uh, a Quest 2 VR headset, all you have to do is download the Gravity Sketch iPad app, um, make a tutorial, and send that video to us. So it can be about making anything whether it's sketching super, something super simple or a tool or tip, um, just make the video and you send it to us. Uh, and then we will post those videos on our Facebook page and the post with the most likes wins the challenge. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And so the deadline for that is June 18th, I believe. And um, yeah, so if you wanna win a Quest 2, definitely highly recommend participating in that. Um, and uh, you know, it's just downloading the free app and making a little video. So uh, I just want to thank you again. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you all for watching, and thank you very much for your questions. Hopefully uh, you feel a little bit more equipped to use the iPad app, um, and we're super excited to see what people can do with it. Um, yeah, till next time, thank you very much for watching. Bye now.